Okay, Ian Black with Talk Smack Podcast. Man, I'm so excited today. We have Ross Milet here. Yes, sir. Thanks for having me. Ross, thanks so much. Um, people who don't know, people who do know, people who don't know, Ross is a heavily decorated amateur kickboxer, and he's just recently turned professional boxer. Yes, sir. And he's now, I got to say congratulations on air, 2-0. and Thank you, yeah. Dude, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. I just watched, I uh, had the pleasure of watching your second fight. Against uh, Cruz, what was the Daniel Cruz? Yeah. Daniel Cruz, yeah. um, dude, what a display! Yeah, it was fun, and we were we were nervous for it because he was five and one. And, yeah, that's uh, and I thought that too. I was like, this guy's, you know, he's 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 pretty darn good. Yeah, and <laughs> yeah, he's not like an zero and four kind of guy. Sure, um, yeah. you know, we want to make a statement early, so I think that you know, um, my in my first fight, I fought one of the top prospects coming out of Ontario. Yeah. And then uh, that moved forward into this Daniel Cruz opportunity, and they said, "Do you want it?" And we said, "Well, yeah, okay, sure, <laughs> give it to me." And uh, yeah, and I think that <laughs> we want to make some waves early. Yeah. And uh, the more waves we make, the more you know. Hopefully, people take notice and and want us on their shows, or you know, just just appreciate the way that I fight. You know, I mean, if I can, you know, hang in there with a guy that's five and one early, um, you know. Dude, you didn't just What's hang. Next? You didn't just hang. I gotta <laughs> say, I'm sorry, but you. And this is no disrespect to to, to Cruz. I mean, he was. I yeah, you know he's a he's a, a a decorated fighter himself. But dude, you you definitely made waves, man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, the goal is to dominate, right? And, <laughs> and dominate in a very different way than we sure. we fought in the first fight. Okay. Um, you know, I want people to realize that you know I can evolve as a fighter, and I think you see a lot of fighters today that don't change. You know, from amateur to professional, or for from fight to fight like you watch you watch both fights yeah yes yeah i did so yeah. briefly watched the danforth one but i yeah. more so watched the second yeah. i don't know there was something that felt um more uh, important for me to watch the second i don't know what it was it was, oh, it was just uh, the whatever. energy of when you sent it to me i just felt like i needed to dig yeah. into that one well it's the most so. recent right um but yeah i mean like we wanted to say okay like this is how we're fighting the first one mm -hmm. you know against a really game you know opponent that likes to fight mm -hmm. and then the second one we didn't really know who he was we didn't have any tape on him we oh. didn't research him okay so we we developed these goals and affirmations um with my team and they said okay this is the way that we're gonna fight and here's game plan a b and c and a b and c has a one two three attached to it <laughs> and if you if you a doesn't work We'll move to B, and then if B doesn't work, we move to C. So there's always contingency plans and things sure, like sure. that. Um, but it's yeah, smart no smart fighting, I guess. Right? Yeah, and we wanted like we wanted to dominate. So and that was uh, you, you definitely did. Luckily, that's how it happened. People you know? should uh, definitely search that one. We'll plug it later on at the end of the show. And well, before we get too deep into the fights, I, I do want to talk, Ross. I want to talk a little of your backstory and what was it? Because um, I mean, you've been training in sort of martial arts and uh, yeah. you know like, like these types of. Um, uh, I guess, like, sports for, for quite a long time, right? You, you've been in it since you were quite young, you know? Yeah, the martial arts journey started when I was, like, four. Wow, four. So, yeah, and uh, it's it's fun. Like, it was, uh, it's actually not, it's, uh, my parents got me into it because I was this, like, high-energy kid that my mom said I never walked. I always ran everywhere, you know? <laughs> and I was the type of kid that, you know, would run up the stairs, land face first, put my tooth through my lip and then keep going, you know? And like, it happened all the time. And uh, so they're like, we need to get this kid into something that he's going to, you know, learn something, le especially discipline and respect of the martial arts, but also burn energy because he's like way too much. And so we got put into jiu-jitsu when I was four, um, Japanese jiu-jitsu. Mm -hmm. So a little different than Brazilian, obviously, which is what you do. Mm -hmm. um, and that went until I was about 17, 18. And, Four years uh, old, Japanese jiu-jitsu, up until about 17, 18 years old. Yeah. Wow. And so there's, there's like three continuous timelines that happen throughout my martial arts journey. Um, and they kind of cross over and fade in and out, which is neat. So there's, we'll call it like the jiu-jitsu journey or the martial arts journey. Then there's the, the kickboxing slash martial arts journey. Okay. And then there's sort of where we're at now where there's less martial arts involved. But, you know, I still try to take those values from martial arts into what we're doing now. Um, so to start, in a nutshell, you got the high energy kid stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. So it turns out... Which is out, super smart of your parents, by the way, sorry to interject. Totally, that. yeah. It's great. You know, my, my parents always taught me the good values, like, yeah. you know, respect your elders and, you know, you want to have good character and 
please thank you, all those things. You but see I mean, it in your fighting too, man. You do even at that second fight. Like there's no, there's it's not about an ego. It's not necessarily, it's, you're a confident uh, young man, young fighter, but you're also a very respectable person. You're, you're disciplined. Like you see it in your fighting and I think that's yeah. fantastic. Yeah, that's I, think, I think for me, it's like confidence in my ability, but like I'm there to fight. I'm not there to make fun of nobody. I'm not fair to like, I, I really don't care if there's altercation beforehand. Sure. It never really affects me because sure. like at the end of the day, we're stuck in that ring together, you know? So whether you disrespect me or you're nice to me, like I'm still going to do the same thing. You know, there might just be a little more motivation if, <laughs> <laughs> if, if you know, you get on the bad side, but whatever, yeah. right? I Go mean, from wanting to punch you in the head to really wanting to punch you in the yeah, head. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And add a little bit more zip on those shots. Sure, right? sure, sure. Um, cool. So the Japanese jiu-jitsu journey and then... And then kickboxing. Okay. So then it just so happened that my sensei, uh, Nick Petrov in jiu-jitsu, was one of Maz's fighters, who's my coach now at BAC. Maz Nawaz. Yeah. At BAAC, yeah, back, yeah. yeah, in Burlington. And, yeah, Burlington. So we, um, it was just weird. Like Nick put kickboxing in his curriculum. I loved it, you know, way more than the ground stuff, way more than the throwing stuff. Um, we ended up doing a world jiu-jitsu championships, um, in Niagara Falls back when they had it there. And I was probably like 13. They wouldn't allow me to fight in the men's divisions um, because I wanted to do like the punch kick throw, like sport jujitsu. Right. Um, but at the time they wouldn't let me. Um, so we did a jujitsu demo. And then basically that was it for my competitive jujitsu stuff. But Nick had me doing light contact kickboxing at like eight, nine, 10. <laughs> You know, <laughs> you're a monster, dude. And those those were all Maz's <laughs> tournaments, right? I mean, they were run by you know at the time the WPK, which turned into what is now Waco Canada, okay. right? And I mean, so, and these are all kickboxing organizations, like right, circuits, that are, yeah, circuits yeah. yeah, yeah. And so, just for listeners, because some might like are I'm green, and there's a lot, yeah, of yeah, yeah. Some so, who I mean, aren't, but some who are. So. There's tons of kickboxing organizations out there. Some are more competitive than others, right. and Canada is in sort of a weird spot between. PSOs and NSOs and I try not to get involved like I just I just like to fight combat sports too are difficult we had there was a ban a little while on jiu-jitsu tournaments yeah and, I mean you got grappling industries you got IBJJF um, you got the Ontario Open which happens every year but yeah there was a ban for a little while because of lack of uh, apparently lack of security lack of health uh, first aids and stuff like that but I, yeah. I know that it's been cleaned up since but well I know there's it, always uh, a, a little gray area there with the martial arts and, and yeah and, stuff and I know that like in Canada they really wanted to clean sport up Right. So what they sure. did was they made everybody reapply right. for PSO status. So boxing, hockey, you know, all combat sports, all regular sports too. Right. So, I mean, you know, in boxing at one time you had boxing Ontario and then you had another, uh, the OBA, um, and they were like deemed the unsanctioned group. Uh -huh. Right. And so, but I mean, do, do they produce better or worse fighters? You know, who knows? People right. just like to fight. I think, I think for us, like for, for the sport aspect, people just like to fight. From the safety perspective, though, like you, you need to have a PSO that has regulations, that has paramedics there. Because I mean, I've done, you know, even coming up with Maz, sort of skipping forward down the timeline on kickboxing shows. You go down to the states, you know, you have a, a kickboxing tournament, and there's no paramedics there. Yeah, you know, people are getting knocked out left, right, yeah, center. Yeah, that's dangerous. Yeah, you, and yeah. so that's what I think Ontario is really trying to do. Is like, and especially with you know, Waco Canada and then there's a there's a Muay Thai one as well. They applied, they got it, and now it's it's about safety. But there's yeah. also this huge backlash from the people that didn't get it. Right. Oh, okay. So okay. I mean it's just it's it's Right, to every yin, there's a yang right there. Yeah, right six there. and yeah, a half dozen the yeah. other, right? So, so you move on from kick so then we go from kickboxing and then when did um so it's Western boxing, right? Like that now that you're Yeah, so it was like American style kickboxing, right? Okay. So waist up rules. Okay. Um no low kicks at the time. Right. Um, and we, so I went from, and you're what, 13 at the time or no, you started at nine, you said, <laughs> yeah. So light contact, nine years old, moved in. And then I had my first like full contact, like ring sport fight at 12. Wow. And so that was in Lockport. 12. New yeah. That was in Lockport, New York. <laughs> I was um, playing with Star Wars toys. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> and, uh, Lockport, New York. And we, uh, I think that day I fell in love with it. Lockport? Yeah. Like in Tanawanda? Like in, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Lockport, exactly. Gambino Ford. And yeah. it was in uh, the Keenan Arena. Um, that is so cool. I man. actually remember. Western like, New York, this guy going down 12 years old doing some competitions yeah. in Western New York. That's cool. And, uh, and it was a show. Like it was a nighttime show. Wow. And so I wasn't under Maz's wing at that time. Okay. And Maz headlined the fight. So he was the main event. And then either he was the main event or this other... Uh, kickboxer Amr Abdullah who's was phenomenal in his own right 
um, they were friends. Okay. And so they would headline or co-headline these shows together, and then they'd have a huge amateur undercard. And they were huge, like lights, you know, this and yeah. that. So Big deal, yeah. Fought one, Matt took some notes. And I guess he liked the fact that I was coming up through Nick. He liked the fact that, you know, I was coming up through martial arts. So he said, yeah, okay, I'll give this kid a chance. And literally from then on, it was like in terms of kickboxing and boxing, it was me and Matt, wow. you know, and we had our team. So there was a team way back when called Taz or Team Abu Zaid, which is what it stood for. And uh, we were notorious. Like we would just go everywhere together as a team, black and white, everything. Our tracksuits were these Diodora dope black and white tracksuits and everyone knew our team. You know, Jackie LaChapelle, one of the girls was probably one of the best fighters I've ever seen in my life. You know, um, and she was a product of Nick and Maz as well. You right. know, so I think it it just came full circle yeah. in terms of that. And uh, it was funny because we, when we were fighting, it was all about fighting. You know, yeah. we stuck together. We didn't do anything. Like if somebody went to the washroom, it's like, yeah, let's go. You know, if you wanted to get a snack or candy or whatever and sneak out away from coach, you know, you go with a teammate, you know, hmm. and, and that's the whole thing. So yeah, loyalty, family, all that. Yeah. And, and I think it, it now that's why my team feels so comfortable, you know, and yeah. I think that, you know, if you were to look at my team, like I have guys that are from the Taz days hmm. still on my team. So I have like Brian and John and Maz. And Maz is sort of like the godfather, right? Like whatever he says, I'm like, yeah, okay, for sure. Let's do it. (laughs) So, um, so yeah, I mean, that was that. And then Maz got me into, or sorry, I got my black belt, Japanese Jiu-Jitsu. I was 16. Um, and then I sort of weaned off that, you know, and, and I think it was, it was a long, long Jiu-Jitsu career, you know? Yeah. That's, I mean, from four. Yeah. 16. And, and on, on again, off again. Sure. Like I did take a break, switch gyms this that so yeah but that's i mean again you're young and you know at that age you you're you're i mean even even at 30 30 you know five turning 36 i find myself dipping all over the place i've totally you know, I trained i yeah. trained jiu-jitsu and um you know a few years with daniel and scott and uh, lewis and daniel satsos and then now with alex sahabi and uh burlington bjj which is above BAAC, which is yeah. where you where you where yeah. you teach and where you train yeah. boxing. Yeah, and we're um, lucky to have you guys. I mean, th- I think that's the big thing is when we did that spot, we were there's a little bit of like, okay, we have this other guy coming in, and then we meet Alex, who happens to be a wizard. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, and he comes in, and we're like, this guy's awesome. Nice, you know. And we yeah, because I guess that you never know, right? You could just be getting who knows. Totally, someone could just and come it could in, be right? one of those, you know, McDojos. <laughs> we were talking about earlier, right? Mm-hmm. Where you don't know who this guy is, and sure, you know, we're very lucky to have Maz and Alex under one roof, you know. And oh yeah, and I always can like I talk with uh, I had uh, Scott Lewis out on recently in the podcast, and we just talk about how the the fact that, you know, you go back even a few years and there just wasn't nearly as many Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belts mm-hmm. available, readily available totally. in towns. Yeah. And now anyone, like the fact that you can have one and train with one and, e- yeah. or even, even brown, even advanced brown belts, like yeah, that's such a treat. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, talking with Scott, cause he was saying he used to travel, you know, miles and miles to just go train with the black belts. Totally. Yeah. I remember watching it and he would say like, it's either Montreal or Vancouver. Exactly. You yeah. know? So it's like. Well, that's far. Like, and BAAC, where where uh, where Ross trains and, and coaches, and it's a cool gym. Like you guys got that great boxing vibe downstairs, and sometimes you you let us use the mats on Sundays, and if if it costs yeah, me. it's just a good, it's a cool collective, man. Like, well, and, cool and again, vibe. like we try to take that martial arts vibe, where you know we respect everybody that's in the building. Mm-hmm. You know, like yeah. why would I say no? Like we, you guys are in my boxing ring more than some of my boxers are, right? You know, and and that's cool. You know, and I think for. I think for other gyms, I think it's a, it's sort of like a eye opening, um, scenario where mm-hmm. it's like, oh, these guys work collectively together. That's that's weird, and it's not an MMA gym. Oh, you know, it's I, not, I yeah. think that's the big thing is it's not MMA. There's jujitsu upstairs, which is a completely separate entity, right? And I think that that's cool, and and everybody upstairs is cool well, and it, talented. And I think, well, thank you. Um, <laughs> I uh, and I agree, and I also do love the, what you just said. It's not it's not really an MMA gym, and it it, it has this. Uh, it doesn't have the stigma. It ha- it has a warm, 
welcoming yeah, yeah. feeling. Come hang out. Yeah, and that's know? I think that's very important because I mean, in a sport that's already in sports in general, kickboxing, boxing, Brazilian jiu-jitsu, uh, Muay Thai, these things are can be very intimidating to people, totally, especially to get yeah. going and to get started. Yeah. But when you have a vibe that's um, a little more, you know, a little just a little softer, warmer, down to earth, you know, like it feels yeah. good that you want to go there. You know, you want to yeah. meet these people and train with them. So I think it's important. Well, and I think we make it very goal oriented, right? So mm -hmm. you know, if your goal is to get in shape use it to get in shape don't yeah. you don't like not everybody needs to get hit you know and i think that that's a big difference i like that because i don't want to get hit yeah you <laughs> even know, though like, i do sometimes <laughs> we we work with like our like our students start at four again but i mean we have like 60 year old people that come to the gym like yep. do you really think they want to get hit in the head <laughs> nope. like, or people that have like exclusive jobs sure you know financial advisors actors you know yeah. like i need this face i need this nose yeah so if if you go to an interview and you have a black eye <laughs> you know it's not it's not the best i definitely have had an audition i remember before and from a couple years back and i'd gotten a bit of a it was a it was an awkward choke an awkward uh lock and then something happened and i had caught a i caught like a, a left or a right just briefly caught the and old it, left hook and yeah. it just yeah but it was and it was it was not it wasn't a strike or anything but it just happened to be wrong place wrong time wrong right, moment right, right, right. and i had to go to an audition and you know you, you try to like clean it up a little bit but yeah. you just know they're, you know. they're yeah, staring yeah, yeah, at it and yeah. you're yeah. like you don't even know what to say you're like yeah. well yeah, I, I have a little bit of a fun extracurricular life, and uh, yeah, totally. you know, I don't want it yeah. to stop. So you know, well, I know that being an actor, if if you book certain jobs, you're actually you have to sign contractual agreements that you won't train certain sports and take um, take part in certain things. You can't drive motorcycles. And it makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Is if you're an in, if you're an integral part of a show for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, especially if you're on like a season show, right? Yeah, like, and they need you to they you're need on, you you're to on be season there. <laughs> eight and you know, you need yeah. to you need to look the same as you did through one through seven. They right? might not want you practicing joint locks and yeah, yeah jabs yeah, and totally. you know, right or left hooks <laughs> while you know, while you know, you need to be memorizing, you know, thirty pages a day and you need your face to look the same. So there's yeah, always yeah. that. But, <laughs> Still gotta look pretty, right? I wanna talk a little bit about uh your your first pro fight yeah, uh, as yeah, a boxer. Sure. And it was uh, uh Faya's Sultanyar, I guess, was the fellow's name, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you were just saying before, so he, you said he was a bit of a, a bit of a brawler. You said he was a bit of a dude. Just likes to fight. He and likes you know, to fight. Okay. You know what? I th I think it's cool because we had uh, amateur experience as well. So we we fought. We went one and one as amateurs, um, which we'll talk about too. I want to. There's a Pan Am situation. I really want to talk the first so, pro fight. So we fought as amateurs in boxing. So okay. when I guess to go way back into those timelines again. Maz just got us to fight. So we would box, kickbox, low kick, K1, full contact, whatever. He, he spent a bunch of time in Russia training with the Russians and, and did the, uh, ran some programs with coaches there. And, and he realized that these guys would just fight every weekend. You know, they didn't care if it was in light contact, full contact, you know, K1, whatever. So he's like, okay, you guys are going to do that. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay, whatever. All right. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and one weekend it's this way, the next weekend is this way. So huh. let's make it happen. And so some weekends we would actually go, you know, into the States on a Friday, fight Friday, go somewhere else, fight Saturday, go somewhere else, fight Sunday, and then come home. Wow. So yeah, yeah, it was cool. So anyways, yeah. So let's talk Dan Forth. Dan Forth. So we, uh, we went one and one as amateurs. This was 420, was it not? Yes, it was. And they, they totally branded that show for that, <laughs> which is funny because you have a straight edge guy on that show, right? I mean, I don't, I don't oh. drink, I don't do drugs, none of that stuff, Which, so. hey, didn't know that about you, man. But it all, yeah. it makes total sense. Yeah, a lot of like uh, I mean, there's there's both, but there's a lot of great martial arts that are pretty pretty straight lined. And I mean, I've been sober yeah. for five years, and yeah. it's been a, it's been fantastic. I, my life has changed completely because of it in so many ways. But um, keeps you healthy, man. Yeah, but I mean, you want to perform the way you perform. You gotta be healthy. Yeah, and I, I think any other ways, like I find that you know, if you're gonna turn to booze or you know, smoking or whatever, doing drugs that's going to be the first excuse, right? So, totally. I mean, like, we have clear-cut goals, and that's why we took that guy on, Daniel Cruz, in the second one, because, mm -hmm. like, we have goals. We want to make those waves. And if I'm ever going to have an excuse, it's going to be a bad habit. I want to be 40 and say, you know what? I did it. There mm -hmm. was no drinking, no drugs, so it was on me, mm -hmm. you know? And that's that's different. That, I think, a lot of fighters can come to terms with. You see a lot of fighters that retire, and they're like, oh, can I go one more? They get back in the ring, and then they're hurt, right? So It's very, very... Um Mature of a twenty-seven-year-old to yeah. to take that on, man. That's I respect that. Twenty-seven that's, going on fifty. That's <laughs> we talked about that to our lower back. Um, yeah. Very disciplined, though. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, which we, I mean, obviously, uh, you learn from you know, you know uh, solid parenting, a good home front, uh, martial arts, martial right? arts in the beginning. Yeah. yeah, that was it. And and you know, I think the other thing is too is is that I always have this vision in my head, and and I I think I got this from Maz. Like, I can see in my head while I'm training my opponent's training, right? And like, they're always outperforming me in my head. And that's always making me go a little bit further, hmm. you know, and, you know, falling off a treadmill or puking or doing whatever, right? So I think for me, like, that is my push, right? And then I'll say, okay, you know what, they're out partying now. I'm going to go for a run. It's 4 a.m., <sighs> you know, and then you do it, so. Wow, okay, so you're leading up to the four, hashtag 420, and you're, yeah. no, you're nowhere near that kind of stuff. So what, what kind of prep, what kind of mind prep were you doing for this fight? Because this is your first professional Yeah, so, you know, we do, match, we do right? a lot of, uh, Maz, my coach again, has a good background in sports psychology. So we, you know, develop goals, develop affirmations, and, and we knew who we were fighting. Okay. And we knew chances are there's going to be a lot of similarities because he didn't really change too much between the first fight and the second fight. Okay. So, you know, a lot of it was getting my feet wet, you know, and, yeah. and seeing what these smaller gloves are like. And Oh, yeah, what, and what is the ounce? Amounts. They're eight ounces because okay. we're under 140 whatever. Yeah, you, so you're a you're a bantam or a super featherweight? Is that correct? Super bantamweight, super bantamweight or that's junior right. featherweight okay. or yeah. whatever. There's so many. <laughs> so many. Yeah. Yeah, so okay. basically, I'll fight between 122 and 126. Wow. Um, 130 if I have to. Um, so yeah, make so, no mistake, listeners and viewers, this is a powerful, an extremely <laughs> fast, strong, and powerful 130 right in front of me. This this guy is yeah. a, he's a machine. A man. whopping five foot four. Yeah, <laughs> dude, I, I do it all the time. I'm five eight. I'm one fifty five. And whenever we're getting ready, say I'm going to roll with a, you know, like a two hundred pounder or one eighty yeah. pounder. I'm like, oh buddy, here comes one hundred fifty five. Here yeah. it comes. But the cannonball's coming. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, we, uh, you know, we did, we did all the prep and I think going into the fight, you know, it's a little bit stressful. It's your first like real professional fight. So, I mean, there's anxiety there. It makes you tired. And we'll do Danforth music hall too. I mean, you're, you're, it's not a tiny, you're looking at 1500 seats or whatever, right? Like that, maybe 2000 seats, even yeah. like if you, if you really yeah. stack it. So plus balcony. So, you know, there's that pressure of the show. And you know what? I give the promoter a lot of credit. Like Lee Baxter, who's the promoter on that show, he promoted both my shows, and and he sold that place out. You yeah, know? and and it was phenomenal. The show went off without a hitch. You know, my performance was good, which is even better. Awesome. Um, but I mean, like it was it was one of those times when I walked to the ring. I actually like had to close my eyes and be like, I'm walking into my own ring. Like this is the Bay Area Athletic Club ring. Okay. Because I had to I had to completely remove myself and that's why you saw in the first round like it was it was a lot closer than it probably should have been right you know and it was it was getting my feet wet seeing the new gloves this that and the other thing so for me like the fight kind of did this like it went up um the trajectory of the fight went up i guess but the uh it was funny because after the fight i was like okay we got to debrief this now and so like two days later we debriefed and made new goals and knowing that there might be something close coming up so I love it. You the, the the that mind already kicks in when it's over. You're like, nope, no, no rest for the wicked. Here we go. Like, what? Did, okay, let's watch the tape. Let's get this. Let's get that. Let's, yeah, let's you know yeah. get a strategy. Yeah, let's... we needed a couple of days to kind of decompress. So that was sure. it was like two or three days after. Okay. Um, but you know, Maz again, like put this like if you win a fight, you're running 10k in the morning. <laughs> you know, because <laughs> we we have goals like clear cut goals. Yeah. But then you know when you turn pro, I think there was there's now expectations. Absolutely. And I mean, and I think there, you know, we can argue there's a timeline. So it's like you want to capitalize, yeah. make hay, yeah. right? No, and, and I gave myself like a very realistic timeline. Like if we're not here at this point in life, then maybe it's time to pack it in. Okay. You yeah. Know, and, Nothing and I, wrong with that, man. That's it. Well, and I think that the benefit of that is, is that, and it's, it's almost a, a bit of a blessing that I waited till a little bit longer to turn pro is that like, you know, I know my why, you know, and my why is like, you know, my fiance and I want to get married, you know, and she like, she's so much motivation for me. Right. Cause I know what she wants. She's in school full time. And, uh, she, it's funny with her because she, she's so supportive of the fight career. You know, she's like, go do it. That's huge. And I'm like, I think that's oh. honestly the most important thing a fighter could have is having someone like that on their side, supporting it, because I can yeah. only imagine how many people don't support it. Oh yeah, and, and, and all and all the change. bullshit that comes that, with it too. Yeah, like, that would have to change your brain. You know what I mean? If if you didn't, yeah, yeah. cranky yeah. dieting yeah. and you know training at all hours. Why are you doing that? Why do you hurt yourself? Yeah, no questions asked. No, that's that's a humongous 
benefit. And, and asked the right it's question. A necessity. Yeah, yeah, sure. She asked the right questions naturally. Okay. How was your sparring session? You know, how was your session today? Hmm. You know, did you work hard enough? You know, like, like she knows. She gets it. Oh, dude, you got a good one. Good for you. Yeah, the best one. Mm. So let's talk a little bit. Okay, I want to go back, back in time to the Pan Am's amateur uh, kickboxing where you got yeah. silver. Yeah, so that was the first. Silver and decision. First Pan Am's that I ever did. How old were you at that time? Uh, good question. It was in Brazil, so usually I can go by country. So I think it was 2000 and 2018 is the junior world, so it'll be a Pan Am year. It's probably 2002. Okay. I think I was about 22. I was either 20 or 22. Okay. Um, and I heard you were like, this was, I mean, it's weather very, we're having very interesting weather right now with this humidity and this heat, and you're getting heat waves just like that down there. And you, yeah. and you were just telling me you were fighting outside. Yeah, so they had this like <laughs> soccer facility with no walls, right? So there was a roof. And I'm assuming that was just for rain, but the walls were completely wide open. Okay. So we show up to the venue. Like reverse Coliseum. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And and internationally, sometimes you get different rules at in different organizations. Mm-hmm. So usually the rule is you can only fight once per day. Okay. So the whole tournament was supposed to go over like four days. Okay. So we did all of our fights in one day. <laughs> So I had three fights. <laughs> so how many rounds would that be total? Is that... Uh, nine rounds. Yeah, nine rounds. And we didn't warm up because it was so, so freaking hot. hot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, that, that was the big thing was like people were exhausted. We were like, you know, we had a runner going out for water every 20 minutes. I, I read that uh, Maz, your, your, your coach, I, I, re- he, I think he said something like it wasn't uncommon for someone to lose like five pounds within the first like... F- first or second fight oh i have no idea man probably because like you're just <clears throat> yeah it's 30 plus humidity probably 40 you're yeah. just like pouring you're like a faucet like wow man that is insane yeah it was cool and and i think my first fight was actually my toughest i fought oh, yeah. this guy so i moved up weight classes for this one too because, i read that too yeah yeah so they do this thing called at the world games um at the time, it was the World Combat Games, which is, I guess, the equivalent to the Olympics for kickboxing. So my weight class was a qualifying weight class. Or wasn't. And then I moved up to 141. Okay. So it was funny because, like, going into it, you're like, okay, I can walk on the scale and it's no problem. And then you get face-to-face with your opponent and you're like, holy moly, you're <laughs> <Story>. big. <laughs> Story of my jiu-jitsu life. <laughs> so, so yeah, I mean, you know what it's all about. And I think the funny thing was, was that, so the first guy I fought was this killer John C. Lindor from the States. And uh, explosive, strong, fast, smart, had it all. I'm glad it was my first fight because if it was my third fight, I, was, I would be way more tired. Okay. And so the goal was, is because he was so powerful, like hit him between his punches and then get the hell out of the way. And, you know, thank God it worked. <laughs> so that was, that was game plan A. Well, you said tactics, right? That's yeah. That's great. Yeah. And, and that was always my style. Like, I, I'm not afraid to get hit, but I'm also not going to do it. Like, I'm not going to be stupid and stand in there and get teed off on by a guy that's, you know, naturally 10 pounds heavier than me. And that, man, that's, that going into it is already, you're already meant to, you're in a different country. It's, um, you're, you basically feel like you're standing beside the sun. Um, and you've gone up weight yeah. classes yeah. and, you know, at that point you're, you know, you're looking at an opponent that probably just feels 40 pounds heavier because at that point you're like, holy shit, like the mental yeah. man, that's yeah. huge. Yeah. Yeah, it's all about goal setting, man. It's, that's what we do. We do and a gets, lot of mental prep. Then. And you get down to your, uh, you did three fights, right? Yeah, so I mean, the first one went well. Second one, I fought Chile. Um, another good fight, easier fight. Um, and then I get to the finals and I fight Brazil. So the funny thing was, was he got the bye because he's the hometown boy and that's mm-hmm. what they do in kickboxing. So mm-hmm. if you're from the representing country at that time, anyways, now they put you into a pool and it spits you out. Okay. Um, so he's sitting down watching my fight, right? And then they're like, okay, you'll be up in a half an hour. <sighs> I say, excuse me? <laughs> What'd you say? The sun is literally Half beside me and I'm dying. Yeah, okay. and so Maz is like, get some Gatorade and you get some water, yeah. stretch. So we didn't even warm up. Like, uh, literally, I went from sitting down, mm-hmm. stand up, did the fight, and it was close. It was really close. And, uh, you know, you know, people say you won or he won or whatever, and that's not... I mean, I did my job. Yep. I fought. I yeah. fought as hard as I could. And uh, he got the qualifying spot, so congratulations to him. But it was such a crazy experience i think i think it was actually better than fighting three times over three days because you don't 
you don't have time to get nervous. You do your no, first fight, dude, yeah, and then it's like, sure. sit down, drink water, and you're up again in 20 minutes. Yeah, there's <laughs> something, there is something to be said about the way it went down. Because, I mean, like, yeah, yeah. you just like, it's, it's just like, okay, I'm here. Let's do this. Fine. Let's just do it. Totally. Yeah. Let's just do it. Like, yeah. fuck it. Let's go. Yeah. And, yeah, man, I mean. And we're there to fight. I mean, like, yeah. the, the other thing is, is that, like, we know, like, or I know that, like, this is what I'm meant to do. Mm-hmm. You know, my whole life has kind of come down to, you know, you're a fighter. And, yeah. uh, or I'm a fighter. And uh, so when we're there, like, it's not, I'm not thinking about not fighting. Like, I know I'm fighting. It's, do I fight two or three times today? 